This is our Forex blog for January 24th, 2013. Uh, this is also one of the reasons why I haven't done uh, a Forex blog for a while. I've been busy working on this. Also, with some of my automated trading systems trading using this live. And basically what it is is uh, we have for the last six, seven years had many different statistical tools that compare every currency to every other one. Uh, and the latest one that uh, I use and recommend is FX Trend Intensity, which measures the intensity of, in this case, the dollar versus all the other pairs, uh, the euro versus all the other pairs. And what this is, is actually a synthetic index we created to show uh, each of the individual currencies uh, as if it was a chart. And so it allows you to see double tops, double bottoms, when a currency has made higher values than it did uh, for the previous day. For instance, the dotted green line is the previous day's high the dotted red line is the previous day's low. I also have the hourly and 15 minute average on there as well. And so it's very clear uh, not only the trend of the dollar, but as long as the dollars, you know, hold support at the either the previous day's high, uh, 15 minute high or hourly, it's likely to bounce off those levels and go higher. And so you can anticipate, even though the, the short term momentum of this move was down, it held support here and you can see the weakness got less, the daily, weekly, monthly trend was up. It made sense here that the dollar around 225 was likely to go up. Uh, which currency was the weakest at 225? Well, it was clearly the yen. Uh, the euro was above its hour, the pound was above its hour. The yen was the only one that was, was not at that time. So at uh, about 225, 230 here, it made sense to look for buys in the dollar yen. It's very easy and obvious uh, how to use this. Uh, we've used our currency meter for years. This adds a whole nother level. You can see trend line breaks. Uh, let me just bring this up here, level five. Um, 225, it's very likely uh, to have been a decent time to have bought this. And this one actually uh, was not at a pullback at that time. And you can see it broke out right there. You probably would have lost a little bit on that. The dollar continued to eke its way up. Um, you buy the next pullback, it goes up. You buy the next pullback, it goes up, and so forth. Um, you can also spot times when trend lines are broken. For instance, the pound here. Pretty much in an uptrend that gets broken here at 7 a.m. So what was the strongest one at 7 a.m.? Uh, the euro is inching its way up, and also the dollar. It's hard to say uh, which one's stronger between those two, but but you could have traded the pound versus either of them. Pound dollar at seven. We're looking for sales. Now here's seven o'clock right here. It just broke out through its lows as well, and you can see it fell 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pips. The euro pound. Seven o'clock right here. Notice. If you just looked at this chart itself, you wouldn't really have, um, I'm sorry, let me move that back, I made a mistake on here. You know, you have that little range here. Uh, you wouldn't have known that how weak the pound was and how strong the euro was getting at that time. And it wasn't until about an hour later that the big move happened. But the euro pound, uh, 10 pips, in the euro pounds equivalent to about 20 pips in the euro dollar so this one went up 10 20 30 40 50 pips uh, it's almost a 100 pip move when you factor in what how much you would make if you had one lot on that compared to the euro dollar and you can also see patterns like uh, double bottoms for instance here is the pound it came down to this uh, low here rallied up tried to make a lower lower and failed came back above the previous low. This is a pretty high probability time to be buying the pound. It's likely to work its way back up to the hourly, just like any other chart does that. So 935, which one um, is weaker between, let's say, the euro or the uh, pound? I mean, the, the dollar. The dollar's going up. It's not, um, let's see, the, the other one here, 935. Yeah, it looks like the uh, euro broke a trend line there uh, at 9.35. So I bet you if you looked at the euro pound chart, uh, you can find a, a little bit of a sell at 9.30, 9.35. And you can see here's the 9.30, 9.25, 9.30, 9.35, 9.30, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.35, 9.
when it broke the previous bar's low, you can see it pulled back. Now, the pound kind of inched its way up for an hour here, as you can see, and then went sideways. It didn't get stronger at all. And the euro pulled back there and immediately went back up. So if you were watching that euro pound short, you could, you know, kind of eyeball a trend line over those bars highs. And as long as it's going down and making lower lows and lower highs, you stay with the trade. In this case, you can quickly see that the euro is regaining strength. It was previously strong and you want to look to buy it. Obviously, this probably at 10 o'clock here would be a great place to buy it against either the pound or the yen, which broke yesterday's lows and stayed underneath there. So let's take a look at the euro yen uh, coming up to 10 o'clock. It's very high probability trade. Here's 10 o'clock right here. You have a nice little uh, flag pattern. You draw your fibs off the previous swing. Um, you hit control F or you can bring it up here. Guess what? Look where it went to, right to the fib target. And you know, just being able to spot likely breakouts or if you're in a trade, whether the trade's going to go. Notice from 10 to 11, this just keeps going up. What does the euro index do at, um, at that same time from 10 to 11? Let's take a look. From 10 to 11, this just keeps going up, 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 up. It's not until about 11.15 that it kind of runs out of steam and starts to, you know, kind of go sideways. And as long as it's going sideways, you can, you know, stay in your trades. If this one's going sideways and the other one's going sideways, you stick with the trade because it's likely to break out and go higher again. Uh, you can also kind of see a, a level low, and then if that level ever gets broken, then that's when you get out of your trade. Or if it goes up, kind of pulls back a little bit and goes up again and can't break the highs, you know, uh, 1225 would make a, a decent place to uh, consider getting out of that trade. Let's look at this chart. Look at 1225. That was pretty much the end of this currency's move too. Now, this one made a higher high, but the euro as a whole did not. You know, it's kind of going sideways. So it's a very good early warning and what I feel a very predictive tool for trading. Let's, let's scroll back and look at yesterday. Uh, the dollar was underneath the hourly and the 15 minute moving average, broke out here at 10 o'clock. Let's scroll back uh, yesterday and see what was weak uh, around that time. Looks like the euros, you know, was trying to go up. It was above its hourly and 15 for the most the most part. Let's take a look at the pound yesterday. This one was even stronger. You can clearly see than the euro. So you certainly wouldn't have um, sold either the euro dollar or the pound dollar. Let's take a look at this one. So this one was kind of going sideways, but it was underneath its 15-minute moving average for hours, and it just broke uh, recently for the last couple hours underneath its hourly. So a strong dollar yesterday at 10 is very likely to go up uh, against uh, basically a downtrending at the yen that's kind of going sideways. Let's take a look at this. Buying the dollar yen yesterday at 10 o'clock. Now, you saw from that other chart that uh, it made a pretty big move uh, up before it broke that level. It was in a nice little sideways range for a long time. You would have probably got into it very early on in that 10 o'clock bar. But nonetheless, uh, you know, the dollar uh, broke out. This isn't the biggest move in the world, but it's more than enough. The dollar yen doesn't typically move that much. If you got into this trade, and it goes up and it's going sideways right there. You move your stop to break even. Probably the worst case scenario you had on that trade was a break even. And you can see uh, the dollar continued, but uh, shortly after 10, the, the yen's weakness was no longer there and started getting stronger. So two currencies both going up, you're likely to get a lot of chop. You don't want to you know, trade those two uh, against each other. Notice the breakout in the uh, pound at 7 yesterday. Which one was weak? Well, the, the dollar was relatively weak. And at 7 right here, the yen broke from above to below its arrow. And unfortunately, it didn't continue down much. But uh, typically, that's enough of a you know, type of divergence patterns. One's going up, one's going down to allow you to make 15, 25 pips in a currency like the pound yen. Let's take a look at that 7 o'clock yesterday.
here's seven o'clock, and I was right. You know, it went up from around 140.15 to 50. So I was wrong in my prediction of 15 to 20 pip move. It was actually 35 pips in this case. And if you're watching a, a chart, let's say the pound yen here, and you got a nice little pullback, and it breaks out right here at 645. You want the pound to be getting stronger. Now let's take a look at that one. This thing kind of was trending down, and what, how I've been using this is kind of drawing a trend line over the highs, and it wasn't making really a lower low, and broke out right there around 655. So I might have gotten into this trade about 10 minutes late, uh, later than uh, 645. Let's take a look at the yen, 645. It's just kind of going sideways. Actually, at that time, because of the way I scale this over the last two days, uh, the price can at times be a little smaller. I'm going to work on improving that in future versions. You can see actually coming up to seven, it's had a few small down bars. So it is going down. Um, and so when the pound yen is getting stronger, you can see you could have might have got into this trade uh, around 650, 655 at. Uh, the high there, 140.15 versus, you know, a few pips up. And currencies, you know, you can see when they're going sideways, it's not the best trades. Your your best trades are when the market, you know, makes an explosive move up. You look to buy the pullback, maybe in the dollar here, you might have had a break even or a loss. That next pullback right here, uh, you got in from 12 to 1 yesterday this one was going up the euro is also going up so you would avoid that currency this one's the trends up it's kind of going sideways and this one's also the trend is up so I would you know you probably would have avoided that trade or traded maybe the CAD the Australian or the New Zealand which I'm not showing here one of those three probably was the weakest one and would have been a decent trade uh, from 12 to, to 1. Let's just take a look at those. Um, so 12 to 1 yesterday, probably the Australian dollar fell. Here's 12 o'clock. You can see it fell from 54 down to 40 and then it started to reverse a little bit. It came down again. Let's take a look at the New Zealand dollar yesterday from 12 to 1. Here's 12. This one fell a significant, uh, you know, a lot more than the other one. 32, all the way down to 08. So it fell over 20 pips. And let's take a look at buying the dollar cat yesterday from 12 to 1. So this one exploded up uh, just astronomically before that. That's probably one of the reasons why the uh, dollar started showing strength. Uh, from 12 to 1, you can see this one went from about 90 up to 98. You know, more than enough to make a few pips profit versus having a loss. And if you're watching this and you bought the breakout here and you saw uh, way back at 10 the dollar going up, you know, as long as this thing was going up, you might have got out of this trade here at 10.55. If you look at this chart, 10.55 is right around here, and you pretty much caught all the pips in that trade. And for the most part, today was a pretty dead day, but uh, I wanted to showcase what I am working on now. When the markets are going sideways, don't trade them. If you see a multi-hour of a currency not doing anything, just chopping around in a 5 or 10 uh, cent area, that's what the indexes are. They're all scaled to 100. Uh, basically, that means if the currency is above what it started out the year, it would be over 100. If it's underneath 100, then uh, the currency is down so far for the year.